So the purpose of this video is to show you how a functional MRI scan is done uh, at the Biomedical Imaging Center at Beckman Institute. Uh, we like to use functional MRI to see how different parts of the brain are involved in uh, different tasks that we might have people do. So by giving people a task while they're in the scanner watching the images of their brain, we can tell where, what parts of the brain are active during that task and, and how the brain is acting differently. And we can look to see uh, how does that change as you get older? How does that change with various interventions? How does that change with the types of things that you eat and the types of exercise that you do? So what we're seeing here is we're seeing subjects, uh, myself, get into the scanner uh, to get ready for the experiment. Uh, they have headphones on and earplugs because it's a really loud uh, scan. We need to be able to talk to them to tell them the instructions. That coil being placed over the head is, um, is, is a set of antennas that are going to listen to the signals coming from the brain. It has lots of elements arranged around the head. That's to help us so we can image very quickly. Uh, each one of those elements can run a very small uh, imaging uh, experiment, really uh, sensitive to the tissue that's closest to it. And uh, so we want to put lots of coils around the head so that we can get lots of imaging done uh, at the same time. Uh, so uh, Aaron is giving me a a squeeze ball because it's a really loud scan. If I have any problems during the scan, I'm going to squeeze that squeeze ball and it's going to alert him uh, to stop the scan and come in and ask me questions. In the back of the room, there's a video screen. You can kind of see the glow off the ground. Uh, and that's how I'm going to see the task uh, that they're going to present to me. So Aaron is going to the console uh, here to run the scanner. And the first scan is just a, a localizer. It allows us to see where the brain is at in the scanner so that we can then prescribe uh, slices uh, in order to, to image the right parts of the brain for the rest of it. So this first scan will run very quickly uh, and it will just pop up a set of images that show us the three different views of the brain. So one from looking at the top down on the head, one from looking at the side of the head, uh, and then one at looking from the front of the head. And so you can see that here. So it goes uh, side, side view and then front view and then top down view as you go across. Uh, all those gray boxes at the edge are the coils that we've placed around the head that are sensitive to, uh, to the different parts of the brain. And all we're doing now is just setting up where the next scan should be acquired uh, in order to uh, give us some better localization. This next scan just does a really quick 3D scan of the whole head to help us align things automatically for the follow-up scans. All right, the third scan, which is now highlighted in blue, is a structural scan. So what that means is it's gonna provide a really high resolution scan of the structure of the brain. So we're gonna be able to see uh, in fine detail and with really good contrast. So contrast means that we'll have lights and darks that will show us uh, what the structure of the brain is. Uh, and so this scan will uh, give us uh, approximately one millimeter spatial resolution throughout the brain, uh, maybe a little bit less. I think this one is says 0.8 by 0.8 by 0.8 millimeters. Uh, and it will go through and it'll scan the whole head and it takes a while. It takes a while to get a really good structural scan like this. So it takes about six minutes uh, for this scan to run. So we will uh, let this run a little bit. We wanted to give you a little uh, audio to go with it. So what you might hear when you're in the scanner, when you're in the scanner, the scanner makes lots of sounds and uh, it, it will uh, make those sounds because uh, there are there's a lot of torque going on on the wires in the scanner. And so those can uh, make a great deal of sound while you're in there. And it can go up to 130 decibels. That's why we have you wear earplugs uh, and headphones as you're in there uh, so that it will dampen out that sound. The next two scans after this one's done, uh, we will be running some visual uh, functional tasks. So we're going to look and see what parts of your brain are responding to a visual flashing checkerboard. So we're going to have you look in the center of the screen as we display this checkerboard, and we're gonna scan pictures of your brain. We're gonna take a picture every two seconds uh, of all the slices of your brain, and we're gonna show you this flashing checkerboard, and we're gonna look for which parts of the brain increase their signal when the flashing checkerboard is going versus when it's not. Uh, so when it's not, we're gonna show you a little plus sign in the background, uh, it's, which is called a fixation cross. So. Uh, so you'll see here, uh, we have to start the scan and the uh, stimulus, the flashing checkerboard at the same time. So we know everything's lined up. So we know which images go with the flashing checkerboard uh, scan. So we get this running and 
and you're going to hear that scan sounds quite different than the structural scan. It's much more choppy, uh, but it's acquiring images really quickly. They're low resolution images and they don't have a whole lot of contrast, but the point of this scan is to get a, a time series of images of the brain so that we can watch and see where the brain signal goes up when the flashing checkerboard is on. And so you can see the flashing checkerboard on here. And we would have people in the scanner are going to see just one of these screens. I'm showing you two here. Uh, but that, that uh, TV monitor in the back of the room, the subject's able to see it through a mirror mounted in the coil. And they're going to keep their eyes right in the center on the plus sign, on the white plus sign. And their, their visual cortex, the part of the brain processing the visual information, is going to react to the flashing checkerboard uh, that you see there. And so in order to get a signal, we have to do this on and off several times um, because the signal in an MRI scanner uh, may go up and down just based on uh, other things that are happening in the scanner. And so in order to truly uh, believe that the signal we're getting is related to um, it's, it's low when the thing is off and it's, it's high when whatever task we're having you do is on, uh, we have to do that several times. So we have to turn it back off and turn it back on and turn it back off and turn it back on. And so typically we go through, this is a blocked task. It's blocked because we have about 20 seconds on and 20 seconds off, and we might do four or five repeats. The visual flashing checkerboard is very robust, so we don't need very many repeats to get a good uh, image of the activation of the brain. And we'll show you how that's processed at the end of the video here in order to get that activation out. Um, Aaron is showing you that we can actually watch some of these things in real time as they, as they come out on the scanner so we can see the activity show up as we're scanning. Now we're going to do a second ta task, and that is finger tapping. Uh, and so we're going to have people, when they see the flashing checkerboard, just to tap their fingers. Uh, and so we want them to tap all their fingers on both hands. And just when the flashing checkerboard is on and to rest in between, and we have to be very careful. Uh, any motion in the image will show up as activation. So we have to have people sit very still and support their hands in a way that they don't have to move their hands into position in order to tap because even a slight motion will move the brain a little bit uh, in the scanner. You're just laying on a, on a pillow in there, and if you shift your hands around, your head can move, and so we want to make sure people stay very still. So while the flashing checkerboard is going, they'll be tapping their fingers on both hands, and uh, as fast as they can, and I, I like to do uh, you know thumb against the first, the second, third, and fourth fingers, and then back again and tap through. Uh, and we'll have them do that with both hands, and that way both sides of the brain in the motor cortex, the part of the brain involved in muscle movement is called the motor cortex, and we'll see both sides of the motor cortex light up. Normally you would see a crossing over that if I tap my left hand, I would get the right side of my brain to light up, and if I tap my right hand, I get the left side of my brain to light up. And so but by tapping on both, we'll see later when we process this data that we will um, get both sides of the brain. All right, so the experiment is over. Uh, and we're going to let the subject uh, get out here. And so the room is completely encased in copper. And so you can see we have this door that has to be shut tight. It keeps all these signals outside of the room from getting in. And MRI, you're, you're the protons in the water in your body are transmitting radio signals. So we need to keep all the radio signals outside the scanner from getting in there uh, so, that we can, so that we can pick up on the uh, radio signals from your protons. So this is the result of the structural scan. You can see there's good contrast, lights and darks. So we can see all sorts of structures in the brain. It was a full 3D scan at 0.8 millimeter isotropic resolution. So we can re-slice it and view it in lots of different uh, orientations. Uh, you can see the eyes in that image too. So we get lots of information about uh, what's in the head. So now for the visual task. Uh, if we think about the visual task, your, your eyes take in light and they project it to the visual cortex, which is in the base in the back of your brain. Uh, and so we can see what we measured in our scan. And sure enough, uh, the flashing checkerboard caused activation in those, in those red and yellow pixels. Those are uh, statistical maps. It's showing us uh, what the Z score is, um, whether pixels increase their signal intensity uh, when, the, when the flashing checkerboard was on versus when it was off. And so you can see uh, that for the most part, there's a couple of pixels lining up at other places, but for the most part, this is highly localized to what is the visual cortex there in the, in the back, in the base of the brain. Yep, so all the information you're looking at with your eyes goes all the way to the back of your head uh, in order to be processed initially. And then we go to the finger tapping task with the flashing checkerboard. Uh, and so what do we expect first? Well, uh, it turns out your motor cortex uh, is about halfway back on top of your brain and primary motor cortex, and your body is laid out on that motor cortex. So your fingers uh, for tapping are about a 45 degree angle out 
uh, from the edge. And so if we look at this, uh, I'll point out a couple of things. You can see uh, that the, about 45 degrees out from the edge, there's a large amount of activation. You can also see there's a lot of activation here at the base of the brain. So the visual cortex is being activated again because we're giving people instructions uh, based on uh, the visual signal. They're, they're tapping their fingers when the flashing checkerboard is on. Okay, but you can see that out at the edge, at the top of the head, out at the edge at about 45 degrees, the fingers are showing up really well here in this task. Okay, so please let us know if you have any questions.